Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be talking about the gamma function which someone asked me a few questions about so I'm just going to explain it very quickly and briefly. Let's begin. So uh, what you're seeing there on this side here, the integral, it's not infinity by the way because nothing goes to infinity. That is the uh, statement of the gamma function and we'll see more of it in a moment. Now, at first there wasn't a connection between the gamma function and Wallace's original formula, okay? And uh, Wallace came up with something called the product formula. So what does the product formula say? It says this here, that pi over 2 can be approximated using this. And of course, infinity is a rubbish symbol. Shouldn't be infinity there, but anyway. Uh, and the way you can do that is you can take any of the sum of these terms and you can see that it will start converging to pi. So I've only taken five terms here. If I wanted to take another one, it's not going to make a big difference because it converges very slowly. So that gets closer. It's 1.51151. One, and if we take another one like this w7 it's even closer but it takes a very long time to get there okay so somewhere along the line somebody made the connection between this function and the gamma function but where does this gamma function here come from okay so let's see so now uh let's start like this now the gamma function is realized from two two other functions the function e to the minus x and also the exponent of e to the minus x. So this green function here is e to the minus x or minus t, and this one here is just t to the n, okay? So t to the n changes all the time. And of course, um, it, it, it's defined for any value, right? So somebody made the connection when they took the two functions, and this is the function that you see at the bottom here, this purple function, okay, this one here. So and now, of course, uh, let's make that strong so you can see it better. And let's give it this color here. There you go. So this purple function here, or blue function, sine, whatever, is the one that is called the gamma function. And if we put n on 1 like that, then the area is approximately 1. So if you go from 0 to 12, you've covered most of the area. If you want to get to, uh, if you want to get to a better approximation, and that's, oops, I put 11 there. I should have probably put 13, right? Yeah, I'm not thinking. Okay, that's un unusual for me. All right, so it's, it's not actually 1, but, and that's probably because uh, this doesn't calculate it to the exact, let's say five, let's say 15 decimal places. There you go. But you're still gonna have the same problem after a while. So what you can do here is try and make that 15 and maybe not. So you see each time you get more granularity, um, what happens is that you get closer and closer, right? So let's, let's see what happens if we say 30, still not one, right? Um, so you can carry on in this in this fashion, but the higher this number gets, let's make it 100. Still not, okay? So it seems like this has a lot of, let's make it 1,000. <laughs> okay, so it kind of keeps a precision when you go that far, but I'm sure there's a number here where it's gonna turn into one. Let's make it 10,000. Oops, now it fails because it can't do that much. So anyway, you can play around with this and see what happens. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, that there is what you normally think of as infinity. Now, I want to warn you that you cannot find the area under this curve. Okay, you cannot. You can only find the limit. So when they when they talk about this blue area here, this blue area that you see here being one, okay, 
it's not the actual area. It's limited to one. So as you continue to go on that way indefinitely, that means it doesn't matter how far you go, it will always be less than one because infinity cannot be completed. If it could, then you'd have a problem, wouldn't you? So, okay. So that's... Uh, the starting point. Now, obviously, what happens is that this exponential function, the red one, tends to convert e to the minus x in such a way that it always is concave down. And it just gets bigger and bigger with more area. And so somebody noticed that when you go from, uh, let's see, 1 to 2, like that, and then you get 2 factorial and 3 factorial, and 6 factorial, etc., etc. But also the numbers in, in between them are defined. So, for example, half factorial might give you something like pi over 2, if I'm not mistaken. And this part here before the integral is just the definition of the ga gamma function. So if you just take this away and just put t in here like that, that's the definition of the gamma function. And of course, this here is garbage. It means if you go on indefinitely, this, this will reach a limit. Okay, but mainstream academics are incredibly stupid. They do not understand these things. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I don't know exactly how they got from Wallace to the gamma function. But I know Euler had some hand in it too. And that's pretty much it. If you're not already a subscriber to my youtube channel become a subscriber click like follow me on academia this i've written thousands or actually not thousands hundreds of articles and i'm one of the top not one of the top i probably am the top most read academic so you go to this channel here and you click on my profile and you'll see lots of goodies then also i sell books too and if you go to amazon kindle you can see, I think, about five or six books that I've published. This one here is the latest. It's called The Importance of Learning the Right Way. It's very, very important. And there is a free copy of this on Academia, which you can access only after you created a free account and you've logged in. This is the most up-to-date version of what is a new calculus. This here is for teaching toddlers how to do numbers, fractions, and the four basic operations with fractions and everything, by the way. And the only requirement there is that they know how to count, like one, two, three, four, five. So it's a little bit watered down for toddlers. And then, of course, The Nonfiction Origins and History of Calculus is a fascinating book. And The Ultimate Book of Numbers tells you everything you need to know about numbers. You can also, this one is not free. You can only get it here on Amazon. But this copy here, there is an ebook version which you can, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go there. There's an ebook version, which is right over here, which you can download with a watermark, okay? This is already in the top 3%. All right, that's it. I'm John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.